This is weird, right? Blackbeard is built up to be the final antagonist of One Piece, and yet he's pretty much the only one who has never displayed any kind of hockey use. So what you doing, mate? Are you gonna be the Pirate King or not? Well. Let's find out. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and for this video, I have also grown a black beard or at least as much of a black beard as I am currently willing to grow. But just like Blackbeard himself, I also have yet to display any kind of hockey use. Although in my defense, I am non-fictional and magical powers are much harder to use in reality. Blackbeard, however, has no excuse. But the big question we are going to answer is all about Conquerors. Is Blackbeard a user of Conqueror's hockey? And in order to examine this, I have a scientific approved foolproof system of determination because we have actually done this before. On this channel, we successfully predicted that Zoro was a Conqueror's Hockey user before that was revealed. So I don't wanna brag or anything, but my hand has kind of been forced because this system currently has a 100% success rate. Will Blackbeard be a Conqueror or will he be a not that? Let's go ahead and find out with the help of our subscribers of the day who are Lemon Twist, Lemon Worm and Lemon Jesus. I don't know why, but I checked my comments and there were a lot of lemons today. They should probably have a party. But these trio of sour fruits did the amazing thing of pressing the subscribe button for the Grand Line review, which will result in consistent injections of One Piece culture being administered directly into your YouTube feed. And if you want to be our next subscriber of the day, then hit the button and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, or even an old member, or of course, a fruit member. Whatever the case, welcome. So how do we determine once and for all if Dark Facial Hair Man has the goods? Well, it's quite similar to an X Factor style scenario. We essentially have three fictional judges who are the only people in the entire series to have defined Conqueror's Haki. Firstly, we have the sickeningly sticky treble, who in chapter 782 claimed that Conqueror's Haki was proof that one contained the qualities of a king. Meanwhile, I would claim that the ability to be perpetually sticky was proof that one contains all of the qualities of a sex pervert. Next up, we have an obscure character named Daisy, who has a similar but different definition, being that Conqueror's Haki is only granted to the chosen ones, and even putting a number on things being one in a million. One in a million coincidentally being the exact ratio of one Piece fans that know who Daisy is. And finally, we have cool Uncle Ray Lee, who very much has the opposite mindset, claiming that Conqueror's Haki is the power to overwhelm and the embodiment of the spirit. Something not necessarily innately granted, but an ability that appears in all those who make a name for themselves in this here world. And because Ray Lee is a significantly more trustworthy source, we will be taking his factors a lot more seriously than the other two. But what we're looking for in Blackbeard is the quality of a king, the power to overwhelm, and the embodiment of spirit. If he can satisfy at least two of those three criteria, then our chances are looking pretty good. And first up, we have the quality of a king. And I dare say that Blackbeard has invoked his Gorogoro no Mi because I feel like this immediately puts us on some pretty shaky ground. Because Blackbeard very much represents the antithesis of kingliness. Where many kings exist to rule over and even ensure the prosperity of whatever dom they add the king prefix to, Blackbeard's general mission in life seems to be to do the complete opposite. He is a force of anarchy and destabilization. If our hypothetical kingdom was some sort of cherry pie, then it would be Blackbeard's mission to devour it into his impossibly large and hairy stomach unit. And promptly crap it out, leaving nothing but a bad, bad smell wherever he visits in the world. He's quite akin to his namesake, Edward Teach, a real life pirate who was said to quote, engage in frolics of wickedness so extravagant as if he aimed at making his men believe he was a devil incarnate. And Blackbeard is very much following this path in the series, conjuring this almost otherworldly presence. Whether it's his strange body, the rumors he doesn't sleep, or the literal darkness that he can summon to engulf anyone or anything, Blackbeard is one scary mofo. In fact, Blackbeard describes his own powers as the following. The gravity of darkness to turn everything into nothingness and the power of the earthquake that destroys everything. Which is cool and scary and all, but it's not particularly kingly. Blackbeard, despite having an organization of power behind him that he is the rather ugly head of, does not appear to have any real ambitions of what a traditional king would embody. Blackbeard is a disruptive force, and yes, he does want to become the Pirate King, but as we've explored in a couple of other videos elsewhere, everyone has their own unique definition of what being the Pirate King means. In Blackbeard's case, it could just be <laughs> I am the biggest and fattest of the pirates, and that makes me the king. Now surrender your booze, your pies, and your scantily clad women. You know, pirate stuff. But not king stuff, because here's the thing, someone can want to be a king, someone can even achieve the title of king, and that someone with the want and the title can wear a crown that literally says, I am the king guy. But calling yourself a king does not necessarily make you a king. And there are other aspects as well, such as Blackbeard being the epitome of peasantry as introduced on Jaya. He really did look like your typical pub nobody, just drinking with his probably one set of clothes. Plus he was also willing to serve under Whitebeard for two decades, which isn't the most kingly of things. You know, serving is the thing that 
the non-kings do. However, to be fair, Luffy also embodies that rags to Pirate King Richard's story, and many users of Conqueror's haki have indeed served under others, including Zoro, Sengoku, Katakuri, and even the big fish himself, Koido. So I think I'm going to have to turn to the judges on this one. Does Blackbeard unequivocally possess the qualities of a king? And it is a two to one and no. Rayleigh voting a very skeptical no, Daisy voting yes, likely had a fear of being turned into a pie, and Treble voting no because Blackbeard, well, he just doesn't suit his more flamingo-esque vision of a king. That's all right though, because he's still in with a shot as we turn to round two. Does Blackbeard possess the power to overwhelm? And this is tricky because traditionally, Blackbeard has not been particularly impressive in the combat department. Whenever we've actually seen him in a match of punch fighting, he tends to get a little bit wrecked, such as by Luffy and Impel Down and Whitebeard at Marine. Greenford. To be fair, Whitebeard was literally the world's strongest man, so we'll cut Teach some slack there. But to be even fairer, with Blackbeard, it's more about what is unseen. Every important action this hairy dugong takes happens off screen. His defeat of Ace, for example, is proof enough that he packs a serious punch game. But in addition to that, he and his scoundrels also went on to completely decimate the remnants of the Whitebeard pirates during the payback war. So I would argue that he is pretty overwhelming, but only when we're not looking, which makes him all the more intriguing. The fact that every Every great thing he does happens off screen, including Haki, I suppose. Because I said before that he has not demonstrated Haki, which is true, but he is a confirmed user of both observation and armament, which we know thanks to his Vivia card entry. And there was even this very intriguing line of dialogue used during Impel Down, where Blackbeard said that Luffy's Haki had become stronger since the last time they'd met, which is kind of crazy because that means that Blackbeard could sense Luffy's Haki during Jaya. So either Luffy has been using Haki unconsciously for a lot longer than we're aware of, or Blackbeard is hypersensitive to Haki, perhaps even having some sort of advanced form of observation. However, when it comes to overwhelming, Blackbeard primarily does this through magical fruit, with the ability to either destroy everything or turn everything into nothing. It's, it's kind of a much of a muchness. Whatever he chooses to do, everything or nothing, it's a pretty damn overwhelming force. And something we have not touched on yet is Blackbeard's sheer hunger for power. He may not be the most kingly of individuals, but he is the most hungry for dominance. In fact, I'm not even sure if the word hunger quite covers it. It's much more voracious than that because Blackbeard can also be described as greedy, lustful, and even envious of power. To illustrate, if power was a cherry pie, then Blackbeard would be Jason Biggs, electing to have intercourse with the pie prior to consuming it. This man will do anything for power. And if a few pies have to get banged in the process, well then I guess that's just what needs to happen. And on that note, does Blackbeard possess the power to overwhelm? And the results of this with our judges is an overwhelming yes. Daisy's yes coming from her overwhelming physical illness as a result of my unfortunate pie metaphor. Treble's yes resulting from the overwhelming amount of new ideas to try out in his head. And Rayleigh's yes coming from the overwhelming desire to just move on. So we're at 1-1. This will be the decider. Whether Blackbeard has Conqueror's Haki or not now all depends on the embodiment of spirit. So this was a pretty easy category when we examined Zoro because his spirit is undeniable, both on a plane of willpower and in terms of the physical manifestation due to all of the, uh, the demonic stuff. Whereas Blackbeard is oddly much more subtle in this regard. He certainly is sinister, but I still feel like we have yet to see that manifestation of his spirit. With that said, there's a lot going in his favor. Obviously, there's a the fact that he does wield a mighty D, which I believe the pies are well aware of, but the D in his name automatically increases the chance of Blackbeard being a conqueror, because this here D makes him subject to that their fate. And fated individuals tend to be important and get all the fun toys to play with. He is almost certainly a beneficiary of inherited will in this case, likely the will of Rox de Zebec, a man who has been described as Roger's greatest rival. And not only that, but Rox managed to subdue three confirmed conquerors in Whitebeard, Kaido, and Big Mom, who was a lot less big back then because she was going through her sexy phase, but still she was ultimately subdued like all of the others. Rox is currently the character in the series who has conquered the most conquerors. So if he's not a conqueror, then I don't know who is. Not you, not me, and not you again, it's never you. But associating Blackbeard with rocks in any way, shape or form, I think pretty severely stacks the odds in his favor there. And even though Blackbeard is a practitioner of both courage and cowardice in equal measure, I think that still speaks to his spirit. Not every conqueror needs to be a wall-punching, cake-destroying, dragon-fisting Luffy. No, I think that conquerors can definitely be played out a bit more strategically. And when it comes down to it, I think that Blackbeard's spirit is summed up pretty perfectly in quite possibly the most famous line in all of One Piece, which is people's dreams never end. That right there is a display of Blackbeard's spirit. He may be quite picky about combat, very sneaky about his various maneuvers, but in the end, he believes profoundly on a scale similar to, if not even potentially greater than that of Luffy. And that kind of raw willpower is very dangerous because that is literally the source of Haki. 
Haki is a conversion of willpower into physical force, which is true of each type, but especially Conqueror's Haki, because there you are whipping out your will and having a will measuring contest to determine who is the most dominant, who will stand and who will bend the knee. So it's really tough because I think that Blackbeard does have the sheer will and therefore the necessary vehicle to embody the, the spirit stuff. But what I think doesn't matter because it's up to our judges to have the final say. Is Blackbeard a conqueror? or not. And according to the judges, he is. Rayleigh has acutely identified that Blackbeard does pose a very legitimate threat of willpower manifestation. Treble has had no choice but to bow to the dominance of Blackbeard. And Daisy has voted yes because she's just happy to be here. Because nobody talks about her otherwise, and that's probably due to the wild irrelevancy. I would also like to add a bit of a meta argument here, which is that narratively, I think that Blackbeard kind of has to be a conqueror. At this stage in the story, someone who is a legitimate challenger for main antagonist needs Conqueror's Haki by default just to stand up to Luffy. And sure, Blackbeard does have his own veritable fruit salad to throw at Luffy, and he may have a creative way to do punch fighting without being a conqueror, but if we're talking about the final clash to determine who will become the Pirate King, then it might be a bit meh to only have one king participating in that struggle. Just as it would be meh to not have you participating in this next video, because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series, so I look forward to seeing you there.